Let us uh, look at a few more optimization in a SAT solver. And these optimization, I would call them a different class of uh, called random choices. Uh, in any kind of uh, search uh, of satisfiable solutions, you often ask several questions. Uh, which variables to prioritize? Uh, how often you are likely to stuck in local minima in a, of your search and you want to get out of the local minima? Then how do you do that? And if you gather too much information, how do I uh, prune away my amount of information and some priority on how you make your decisions? Let's look at them at one by one. Decision order. One of the key benefits of uh, DPL algorithm was that each time you backtrack, you don't have to choose the same variable ordering again. Therefore, it's important to somehow make a decision which variable to choose next to make a decision. So there are many proposed strategies for the decision order. What we want here is uh, allow different order after backtracking and you should not have a much overhead if you making a decision takes a lot of time then what's the point of having a strategy so let's look at the two very widely used strategies select a literal with uh, maximum occurrence in unassigned clauses so you basically monitor all the clauses and find those literals that are uh, occurring most often and if you make a decision and make it true then what happens those clauses become true and uh, disappear from your calculations therefore you save a lot of uh, time and space this strategy is is good but very very short-sighted it is it's not really maybe a literal occurs very often but maybe not that very important so there's another uh, strategy which is actually very effective and widely used is all, which is called variable state independent decaying sum vsids what is VSIDS? Each literal has a score. Notice that I'm saying each literal, not each variable. So each literal, uh, positive literal and negative literal, both may have a different scores. Highest score unassigned literal is the next decision. You make that literal true, and that's your decision. If two literals have same score, then you break the tie by random choice. The initial score of is the number of occurrence of that literal then what you do each time a a, a learn clause is found and if a literal appears a, in that learn clause then you increment that uh, literal's uh, score maybe after every thousand uh, conflict clauses or so uh, you you scale all the uh, assigned uh, scores by some factor this helps you to uh, make sure that the old scores get less and less value and uh, recently learned clauses contribute uh, more to the score than, than the old uh, values that were learned like several thousand uh, learned clauses before. This ID is almost deterministic. It, it looks at the run of the system and uh, decides. So uh, some solvers occasionally make random choices uh, on uh, to get out the potential local trap so this any such deterministic process may lead to some local traps so what do you do you do sometimes random decisions so why this uh, uh, this uh, method is uh, effective so first it has a nature of exploitation what is the exploitation each time this a conflict occurs you you look at the the, dis, the literals that participated in the conflict clause and then you say Oh, these uh, these literals seems to be important. They are the center of the actions. We should be making decision on those literals. Therefore, by each time you learning from uh, a failure, you you exploiting that that fail attempt and trying to find the uh, solution somewhere else, depending on the local information. The same times you also need to have a global view. Uh, maybe locally there is no solution out there so you need to have, have some nature of exploration so as soon as you learn things it also decay the impact of a particular learn fact decays over time and uh, so therefore the and that gets outdated and the new facts will start becoming more important in your search so there's a there's a nature of exploration where you leave you explore a certain area then you leave it and go somewhere else and uh, 
and do some more search. So that's why VS uh, ideas it seems to be a very effective uh, method to uh, for variable decision. So now let's look at the, our second potential optimization which is called restart. Uh, since set, solver, set solving is a search algorithm for satisfying assignment, uh, you may uh, get into a local trap of uh, uh, search space. And to get out of that, what you do, you, one other idea is you you stop the CDCL process and restart the CDCL with a completely different variable on range. And what do you do? You keep learn clauses across restarts so that you don't uh, uh, redo the old work. So if you keep restarting uh, every num certain amount of time, what happens is you you are not complete. So to, to maintain, to develop it, to have a complete solve, what do you do? You increase the length of intervals over time. If let's suppose initially you took this much time, mm -hmm. then later this and this and this, this strategy will happen some point of time, you will get into get stuck in this, in this local minima here and then again in a big local minima. So what we want is something like this, which takes, uh, which takes longer and longer time, but time to time it gives you short restarts and then it again gets longer and then gets short, short and then long. Okay, so something like this we desirable rather than rather than this. This is undesirable and this form is desirable. These are called heavy restarts. What heavy tail restarts means? Often you restart with the short restarts, and time to time with high significant chances you do long restarts. There's one strategy which is very famous, which is called Luby restart. It was proposed in 1993 before the SAT solver actually became effective. And uh, here is the time interval. So you let's suppose U is the unit time interval. So how much time after which you, you restart is given by the sequence Ti. Uh, if you run the sequence, you realize that it's a, uh, it's, it produces number like uh, uh, one it's a recursively exponential uh, pattern is until you rock this out you won't see that it, it gives you one one two one one two four then again one one two four uh, eight or something like this I mean don't quote me on this but uh, the the pattern continues so for practice just try to do uh, uh, try to write down first 70 points of this this pattern and you will see how it, this is doing habit tail and the pattern will uh, will look like uh, right this and there's a quick uh, nice optimization where you can compute the value of ti with the following efficient uh, recursion equation and try to prove that this uh, is same as this Next choice, which is a uh, runtime choice, which is uh, we call a uh, uh, learned clause deletion. Uh, CDCL over time may learn a lot of clauses, and it, you may solver may may get bogged down. So what do solvers do? Is time to time delete some learned clauses. A solver remains sound with this deletions. However, the completeness may be compromised. You may not. You may be learning same clauses again and again, and then you just don't have. You are not complete. You initially aggressively delete, but over time you, you delete less and less. So there's an important uh, point to think about how many clauses later uh, your solver will start slowing down. Like uh, you try to guess a number, it will be after 100 clauses, 10,000 clauses, a million clauses or 10 million clauses, after which you would think a typical solver have a noticeable slowdown. So there are many proposed deletion strategies and let's think about what are the good choices, okay? Uh, so which clauses to delete first of all? Well, delete long clauses with high probability because long clauses will less likely to help you in unit propagation. So it's a good idea to delete them. Never delete binary clauses. Binary clauses are very useful. You set one literal false and the literal has to become true. So never delete them, they are extremely useful. Uh, never delete active clauses, i.e. which are participating in unit propagation in the past, so you don't want to delete them, otherwise you will have a difficult time uh, building an implication graph. 
uh, when to tell it. So, uh, well, there's a choice to be made here. At sometimes some solvers do deletion only at the restart, uh, or after crossing a threshold number of learn clauses. So, some point of time you have a let's say. Uh, 10,000, 20,000 clauses, you say, okay, now I am reduce and divide them half, I delete half of them. So some, uh, some cut, some reduce the, by a fixed number, some reduce by some ratio of numbers and different strategy and their different level of effectiveness. So there's a one uh, method which is uh, tend to be dominant right now, which is called literal block distance. Essentially, when you learn a clause, you can say how many different uh, decision levels show up in, in, in the learn clause. By that, you, you, you assign a value to that, uh, that particular uh, lit, uh, clause. And uh, if that clause is value is high, you delete it very, with high probability. If it is small, then you delete it with low probability. It, it is a very popular technique it's first introduced in a, in a solver called glucose and uh, now adopted in many solvers uh, this is a fourth technique uh, which is the last one in this uh, runtime choices uh, this class of uh, optimizations uh, which you call phase saving okay so phase saving is the idea that even you make an, a partial assignment some variables are getting assigned because of unit propagation or decisions next time you come to same variable about to build this assign you maybe we want to use the same phase same uh, same direction okay so uh, so this is uh, this is called phase saving so at restart we may want to use same last partial assignment uh, and when you have a restart you say okay uh, just go and look at the last time this variable assigned true or false use the same true and false i mean variable ordering may change but you can use the same sign okay and this this method works well in rapid restarts when if you wait very dramatically we change the assignments uh, what happens is is the whole system becomes unstable and uh, very hard to get good results so phase saving seems to have a positive impact so uh, so we have seen several optimizations and uh, and several types of optimizations first we saw algorithmic optimizations like cdcl then we saw data structure based optimization where uh, you say, uh, for example, uh, two, two watched literals. And then we saw for uh, runtime assignments, we which helps uh, set solver to explore uh, state space uh, of assignments is more effectively or in a, some, some clever form. Now you may ask yourself, uh, can we predict the performance of an optimization or an algorithm uh, by just looking at it? And the answer is no. Uh, current theoretical understanding is fairly limited. We really don't know why a CDCL is such an effective algorithm. Furthermore, you ask, uh, you can look at it as a science. Set solving uh, tip papers are typically have very strong experimental component. You come up with an idea, you implement in a, in a SAT solver and show that actually your performance has improved. Most of your ideas probably won't work, but whenever it works, it, it's, it's, it's mostly proven by experiments rather than proving pen and paper and proving a theorem that this heuristics is more effective than other heuristics. So that, that makes it a science. Art. So what happens is even if, uh, let's say, uh, Let's suppose you are a sad solver user, okay, and you, you come up with a new problem, you try to solve it, and it doesn't work. What do you do? You you write the emails to the people who have developed these sad solvers, you send your instance, and then they reply back, oh, yeah, yeah, just turn on this option and disable those options, and it will work. And you do that, it works. And often, it's, a, it's experience uh, tells you, uh, what works, what doesn't work, so that makes it sort of an art. So sad solving is all these angles in it, and that makes a mm, that is very fascinating, interesting how to how to make an ineffective sad solving technology.